Good morning guys and welcome back. So the last couple of years of COVID and everything that else has been going on, it's been absolutely crazy. People haven't been able to travel. A lot of people are actually sticking around like their areas, a lot of people buying caravans and stuff like that. But I've just noticed that the price of Jeeps have absolutely gone through the roof. So I thought I'd do like a little video for people that are either getting on the market or they're upgrading the Jeep or things to look for in 2021 when buying a Jeep Wrangler. Now this can work for any car, it doesn't just have to be a Jeep or a Jeep Wrangler. But there's a few things to look at, especially if you want to get a good deal. Um, and I suppose if you're selling as well, things to look at so you can get a higher price, I guess. But the prices are absolutely gone for the roof. Um, now we bought our 2010 uh, JK Unlimited just under two years ago. It'll be two years in February next year. So February 22, we'll have this Jeep for two years. Now we bought this for $18,000 um, Australian, which is... Back then, it was about the right price. I probably, I've, I almost bought a, a black one, 2000 and, I think that was a 2009 or a 2010 black one for about twelve dollars or $13,000. Now, in hindsight, that would have been an absolutely awesome deal considering these. Right now, this has got 191,000 Ks on it, so I'm almost 200,000 Ks on the clock, and I could probably sell it for about $25,000, dollars $26,000, which is unbelievable, really. How, how many people can say... They've made money off a car, especially almost six, seven thousand dollars in two years. Like it's unheard of. It's crazy. So they've kind of inflated way out of proportion. There's people that are trying to get about thirty grand, if not more, for these Jeeps, especially the older JK models like my one. So we'll go over a few things to look at to kind of go over. If you're not uh, mechanically minded, I'm not a mechanic, but there's a few things I like to check over. When I'm buying a car, especially Jeeps, um, and it kind of depends where you live in the world as well. So I'll give you a few uh, different scenarios that we'll go through, whether you live in Australia, um, America, somewhere that snows, different things to look at, and that sort of thing. If I do miss anything, leave it in the comments below. I know I probably don't go over every single thing, so if I didn't miss something, leave it in the comments. It will help me out as well, almost might, and, and it will also help someone else out as well if I've missed something. So the first thing you always want to look at when buying a Jeep is the modifications on it. Buying a bone stock Jeep is, a lot of people look at a bone stock Jeep like, oh, it's really boring and stuff like that. It's not the end of the world. You can modify it and it's not that expensive. Now, buying a stock Jeep is probably uh, better for your pocket than buying a heavily modified Jeep. In some ways, one, it's completely stock, so you know, so you know that it hasn't been absolutely well fucked with is probably a good way to put it. Um, you don't know if those people have done things properly. A lot of people end up having issues with already modified Jeeps, people doing dodgy stuff, not doing it properly, not going to proper shops and stuff like that. The thing is, I always pop the bonnets. I have a quick look around. A lot of people will service their Jeeps themselves because they're really easy to maintain in the way of um, changing oil, radio, fluid, just up to date with general services. A lot of people will look at the log books that you keep inside your Jeep. Um, like these ones. Now a lot of people look at these and think, hey, these haven't been filled out in a couple of years and must not be in service. I don't want to buy it. That's not always the case. A lot of people will service their Jeeps themselves. That won't shut. I've broken it. A lot of people will service their Jeeps themselves um, and it's not a bad thing. It just means they haven't paid someone else to do it, like a shop or something like that. My Jeep was serviced by a Jeep dealer before I bought it for about um, eight years and I went to a dealership then someone bought it from the dealership, then I bought it from the person that bought it from the dealership. Um, again, they had it serviced from a service station or a service provider, and I've just been servicing it myself, changing oil, radio, right that sort of thing. Really easy um, to check. All you want to do is um, check your oil, make sure it's got enough oil in it, make sure it's actually been um, checked, if they've got any sort of records, if they've done it themselves. Make sure there's enough antifreeze inside that radiator. I won't pop my on because we've just got home. A lot of things that people pass up is as well. Take the air filter up, make sure that's in good condition. Have a look on the block, make sure there's no um, leaks coming out of the top of the motor or the bottom end of the motor. Um, also around all the reservoirs and stuff like that, just make sure there's no cracks, no leaks, stuff like that. Uh, make sure when you are in the car, the car is cold. You don't want to be wearing a warm car because you can't pop the radiator. You can't check all your fluids and stuff like that. Um, obviously, you'll have a different oil level if the car is hot rather than it is cold. Obviously, all that oil has gone to the top, so you want it to sit down. Also, check out the wiring as well. Um, a lot of people uh, put aftermarket uh, rock lights or 
um, spotlights and stuff on their Jeeps. Um, just make sure the wiring's in a really good um, way. A lot of them come the shepherd, um, you got crap all over the place. If it is all over the place, there might be a few issues. Uh, make sure there's relays and stuff with those as well. A lot of people just hook up aftermarket lights. Don't use relays, don't use the proper connectors and everything like that. That can be really dodgy and can be a fire hazard as well. So just make sure all the wiring's sort of neat and tidy. Um, if it looks sort of all right, that should be fine. Um, but wiring to sort out can be very expensive to fix. Now, also, one of the biggest things as well is paint. When a lot of people are actually looking for a second hand car, especially four wheel drive, they see the paint's all kind of faded, um, scratched, not necessarily dented, also check for dents as well because that can be a massive way to talk down price. But with paint, a lot of paint, obviously the paint in our Jeep is in fairly good condition. We do take care of it, we've buffed it, we've polished it, we've sealed it, make sure there's uh, no chance of it fading, uh, getting worse, and we just do monthly details on it keep it up to good condition. But a lot of people don't do that. But a lot of people forget that with paint, it's easy to bring paint back to life. Um, if it's gone through the clear coat, obviously that might need to have a repaint on it. But a lot of people f also forget that painting a bonnet, a door, not necessarily a roof, because obviously that can be spray painted. Um, we fix it up with the same stuff as we use on the guards, as we said before. So if the roof's faded, you can also use that stuff. But painting a bonnet, door, hinges and stuff like that, it's fairly cheap. For a bonnet, it's about $200, door, $200, because everything on a Jeep can actually be taken off and it's a lot easier to paint. So that can be a great bargain tool for you guys if you do see a Jeep that's maybe it's black, red, whatever, it's got like a faded bonnet or something, if you're like, oh, it is faded, um, I really wanted a Jeep in good condition, um, do you mind taking five, $600 off the price for the um, time it would take to repaint it? A lot of people are more than, a lot of people are more than welcome to actually accommodate for that, even though it's not a massive deal, but it's a great rate to drive down the price. With dents, um, I see a lot of Jeeps actually get like these stone chips um, in the like windshield uh, frame here. It's not a massive deal. Um, they can be touched with like paint pens. Of course, you can do buffing, polishing, paint correction, stuff like that. If you're not up to date with doing that, you can pay someone to do that, but doing a full car, especially a Jeep, is quite a big car. It can be $800,000, $1,000 even more for a company to come through and polish the whole thing. But it does make a massive difference to the overall finish of the Jeep, and it's a great way to actually talk down the price if the paint is, isn't is in um, top condition. They are old, they are older cars and they are four wheel drive, so don't expect they're going to be like showroom condition, but it's a great bargaining chip uh, for you to go and be like, oh, the paint's actually faded. There's a few scratches down the side. If they are scratches, scratches can, majority of the time, can be buffed out if they're uh, not too deep. So it's a great bargaining tool, or probably one of the best bargaining tools I've ever had with talking down the price of the car. Have a look at the paint, go over the whole paint, be like, Oof. hmm, would you look at that? Would you look at that? The paint's fucked. Anyway, also look into these little bolt holes here. We've got a little, a little bit of rust forming in here. Those are very easy to be taken out under the bolts, give them a little bit of a sand. Um, seal them back up, but small stuff like that is a great bargaining tool to talk down the price of a Jeep. Now, I normally get underneath Jeep, grab the suspension components, give them a nice wiggle. If they are loose, just check out the bushings on the end. If you see any splits in the bushings, uh, dirt and grime will get in there. So it's a good indication that you'll need to get um, new tie rod ends, pitman arm bushings, stuff like that in the future. Also give it a good wiggle, that will indicate how much abuse the truck has sort of had also look at for components that have been replaced saying steering stabilizer has been upgraded um stuff like that all my components under the jeep are pretty well factory now also when i'm under the jeep as well the biggest thing for these jeeps is rust so i always look for any sort of surface rust surface rust isn't too bad but a lot of people can detail and clean the jeep really well so you can get like all this is just dirt um, it's not actually rust, but a lot of people can clean their Jeeps in a way that it will hide any sort of off-road work. Um, a lot of people will lie and say, oh no, it's never been off-road, I've, I've babied it, um, stuff like that. So if you don't believe them, check all your skid plates and stuff like here, you'll notice that they'll be all banged and scratched up and starting to have a little bit of surface rust in them. They'll indicate that it's probably been hit on some rocks at some stage, so they'll indicate off-road work. As I said, a lot of people can clean their cars to a really good extent. They will hide a lot of uh, dirt, dust, off-road work. Good idea is to 
if you live in Australia and there's a lot of beach driving, just get your finger in there, go around the chassis rails if you can feel any sort of sand. Um, I can't because I try and keep my chassis as clean as possible. Like you can get your finger out there. Um, also, if you live in a place that snows, a lot of places do salt the roads. So it's a good idea to get your finger in there, check for any rust. On the outside, it might look uh, clean and tidy, but as soon as you put your finger inside the chassis, it can be a little bit dirty. So it's a good idea to get your uh, finger in there, and check for rust. If you do have like one of those little cameras and stuff, it'd be a great idea to actually put a small uh, camera in there with like one of those long heads on it like people do like town toilets to check for blocks put a camera in there you can see any sort of rust decay because these chassis do rust out a lot just because they're open salt dirt um sand um salt if you live in like a place where it snows as we said before it can easily get inside those chassis rails and rust them out pretty quickly now also we're under the jeep we'll be looking for leaks from the gearbox i've got a small leak from um my gearbox, which isn't too bad, um, I just monitor it. So just check, get underneath the Jeep, uh, grab the drivetrain, grab the drivetrain, make sure there's no play inside those uh, U-joints and stuff like that. Um, as we said, check for leaks. A lot of people will go under the Jeep, get some CRC, clean it all up before the sun actually turns up. Um, and also with diffs, check the, uh, make sure the diffs aren't leaking. It'll be pretty easy to notice. Um, check the shocks aren't leaking as well. All these things are a pretty simple fix. Um, if you are, if you do have a leak from either the gearbox or the back of the motor, it can be quite expensive because you might have to um, take the gearbox out to replace like a main seal or a gearbox seal. So it can be a little bit more expensive. Just ask them if the gearbox fluid has been changed um, and when the last uh, diff. Uh, fluids have been changed as well. They're really easy to check. All you've got to do is take the front bolt off and put your finger in there to check if it's actually got fluid in it or not. So it's really easy to check a lot. Uh, check a lot of these uh, things out, um, and they're just small things to go over before you actually take it for a drive. The biggest thing a lot of people don't do, and I think a lot of owners um, are pretty precious on taking other people taking their trucks out, out for a drive but make sure you guys do take it for a drive there's nothing worse than the owner taking it for a drive and knows how it will drive in certain roads so take it for a drive get up to speed i'm not talking about like 50 k's an hour 80 k's an hour get up to highway speed get up to 100 k's an hour and also um stop somewhere like a grass area or like an off-road area put in a four-wheel drive if it's tight could be an indication that some of the um bushings inside like the four-wheel drive system could be on the way out so make sure put in four-wheel drive, get someone that not that's not the owner outside of the car, make sure, make sure four-wheel drive is actually engaging. Um, if it's not, it's not a go. Um, if it's engaging, fine. All four wheels are spinning. There's no clunks when you're turning. Uh, check that. A lot of people don't do that. They kind of just put in four-wheel drive, drive straight. Yep, it works. All good. Go for a good drive. Um, make an indication of what it'll actually be like when you're driving off-road. Four-wheel drive. Do lock to lock, take it over a few bumps and stuff, make sure everything works properly. Um, if you do get a Rubicon, make sure the rear axle lock um, and the sway belt disconnects actually work. Um, tires, there's a range of different tires. Tires aren't, aren't that expensive, so it's a good indication that are they, they are getting bored, you can talk the person down. Also, a good one to talk down is faded plastic. Jeeps are notorious for having really bad faded plastic. Now, I restored the plastic fenders on my Jeep like maybe a year and year and a half ago I'll leave a little link up here if you guys do buy a Jeep that's got faded fenders a lot of people won't go to the extent to actually uh, make these look good but it's a massive massive thing to make your Jeep look a lot cleaner and newer for sale so if you do come across a Jeep that you're buying that has faded fenders it's a good um, way to barter the price down say oh it's not in good condition the, the plastics all faded um, that goes for the fenders and also the bumper and stuff as well. We always see bumpers with uh, that are massively faded and they just look horrible. But for the Bowden Zone kit, I think it was like $85. Did so the whole Jeep, back bumper um, and the fenders. I've done the fenders twice now um, and they look absolutely mint. So 85 bucks to do the whole Jeep. Um, and you can probably talk them down a couple hundred, if not more, uh, with having faded plastic. So really simple. On the interior, there's not much to go over. If they've got seat covers, just pull them up. Make sure the seats aren't ripped and stuff like that. Really easy. 
Um, there's not much that can go wrong or break inside the interior of a Jeep. Just make sure the plastic's in good condition, not fading if there's cracks in, in the dash. You can talk the price down. Also, the good indication for rust um, and wear and tear. Jeeps tend to get like a bit of a water leak from up here. It's just a common thing. Drips down, then also drips into the carpet as well. So take the floor mats back if they've got aftermarket rubber floor mats. Just feel the carpet, make sure it's not wet. If it was a little bit damp, um, it might have rained before, just pull back the carpet as much as you can, um, just from underneath here, um, and just check for rust. Um, and if it has been wet for a long time, it can cause rust on these floorboards, which is like a big no-no. It can be very expensive to um, replace and repair. Um, you don't want to go ahead and replace floorboards. And I think a lot of people miss that as well. Also checking these little gaps here for rust, that's a big indication. Um, and also here as well, these are easy to replace, but they can, uh, it can be a good buttering tool to um, talk down the price. So that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much it. It's just really simple things to go over. The, I think a lot of people look over. If you aren't mecha mechanically minded, you can get like a safety inspection done in Australia, which costs like, I think it's like $100 to take it to the mechanic to like a RWC before you buy a car, which would be actually really handy. For people that aren't mechanically minded, um, if you don't want to pay for someone, maybe find a friend. And there's people, probably people online that are mechanics that would actually come out with you for a small fee. So please do that. Um, it saves you spending top dollar for something that could be an absolute lemon. We got really lucky on this car, 18 grand. We could probably sell it for 26, 27 at the moment. So we kind of are thinking about selling it, but not really because we don't know what we would buy. Um, but check the car out. Make sure it's so check the car out, make sure it's uh, cold when you are having a look at it. Make sure um, you can take it for a drive, make sure you can put it for a drive. If the owner doesn't feel honest or a little bit untrustworthy, um, don't take it at face value. They're trying to get the highest price possible. Um, as we all, you're trying to get the last price. They're trying to get the highest price, so that's kind of payoff. And people probably aren't trustworthy. Um, I've been done over before, um, and it's not a good feeling. So... If you aren't sure about it, take it for a drive a couple times, keep going back to it, checking it out. Um, I know a lot of people just try and put the price up and say, oh, I've got lots of people interested. If you really want it, take it for a long drive. Say, hey, I need to take it for, I don't know, 10 or 15k drive. Make sure everything's in good working order. Because um, at the end of the day, they're not cheap cars. It's almost got 200,000 k's on it and 26 grand. You almost buy a brand new car for 30 grand. So it's a lot of money to put in the car. It's this, well, third, fourth, fourth hand car for 26 grand. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. If you liked this video and it's helped you guys save money when buying your first Jeep or it's helped you get more money for your Jeep in a few ways, hit that like button and subscribe button. Um, I really appreciate any comments you guys leave. I love reading comments. Um, comments haven't really been going off lately, but I love hearing from you guys, seeing if you guys like this video or not, and if it's helped you guys, I really like videos that have some sort of benefit to it so if you guys did like it let me know it really mean a lot to me as always and happy shopping if you guys are buying a jeep welcome to the jeep family it's an awesome thing but they are getting really expensive so maybe getting quick and you might be able to make some money as well so thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you guys next time